Okay, so to start with, I'd like to just lead us in a quick meditation. Um, I'm going to mute us all just to um, make sure that there's no crazy big loud noises. Yeah, I'm going to lead us in a meditation that's just going to help us to kind of center and open up our energy and feel a bit of a connection with the universe and just get in a nice yummy space basically let go of what we've been doing today and and enter into a bit more of, of a heart energy so if you could just now close your eyes <clears throat> and just take a couple of really really deep belly breaths starting the breath really low down in your abdomen and then building the breath higher and higher and higher and higher up into your upper chest before slowly releasing it back in the other direction. Taking a couple more deep breaths like this, just really letting go of everything you've been doing up until this point, thinking about and planning and worrying about. Letting it all go. And bringing your attention into your heart. Breathing into your heart center. Imagining that there is a light in the center of your chest, a beautiful light that as you start to breathe into your heart, it, this light becomes brighter and stronger. And now I just want you to bring to mind some things that you're really grateful for. And it can be the simplest, simplest of things, like the sun, like the ability to walk or see, like the, the coffee in your cupboard or the toothpaste in your bathroom. Really search for those things that you are grateful for, that the little miracles in your life that you really appreciate. Focus on these things. Keep counting them, thinking of new ones, letting them come to you and feeling the change in your heart and the expansion taking place in your heart as you keep thinking of what you're grateful for. And now that light at your heart center is so much brighter and so much stronger that it's starting to shine out around your body. And I want you to imagine that you're sending that light out around you as far as is comfortable for you. And in your imagination, picture all of us 12 sitting or standing in a circle, somewhere beautiful in nature. 
all of us have this amazing light at our heart center that's bright and radiant. And the light from each of our hearts is starting to mingle together with the light of the person next to it. And it's creating this beautiful big group heart light. We're giving thanks and gratitude for this group, for this moment. Right now, we're having this connection with each other that we're never going to have in the same way ever again. This moment right now is unique and beautiful. Giving absolute thanks for this one moment we're in right now with each other. Feel your heart growing even bigger and send that love around our circle. Feeling the heart energy growing and growing. And now I want you to imagine that we're sending that heart energy all around the planet. And it is touching and intermingling with every single person in some way. And with your heart beautifully open like it is now, I want you to just ask yourself this question out of curiosity. Ask yourself, am I separate from the universe, from everybody else? Am I cut off and separate? Or am I connected to all of this? And I don't want you to think about the answer. Feel it in your heart. Am I connected to the universe, to every person, to all of this? Feel it. Okay, well done. So slowly deepening your breathing. Bringing yourself back to the awareness of your body, the room you're in, wiggling your toes and your fingers. And slowly bringing yourself back to this call. Okay, all right, so I hope you all had some beautiful experiences and feelings with doing that and we're going to talk about that meditation a little bit later on because it's relevant to what we're going to be talking about tonight. Okay, so <clears throat> in order to understand what letting the divine lead really is or kind of could look like let's first of all talk about what it isn't so I'm going to share my screen with you now, I know that quite a lot of you 
are quite you know clued up and and all of this stuff and and that's so cool because I can't wait to have some discussions with you about this and I'm sure the way that I am going to explain this is it's going to help you to see it you know from slightly different angles than you usually look at it so it's all you know it's all good it's all the same beautiful um, learning okay so what letting the divine lead isn't so basically as a general general reality this is kind of what it's like for most of us on the planet at the moment we're going around and around in these loops of thought feeling experience and belief and around and around and around in this where we we have a thought about something and then that kind of brings up a bit of a feeling in our bodies. And then with those thoughts and feelings, we tend to attract to us a, a result or some kind of experience that then gets us to form a belief that then the thoughts come out of again, that then generate the feelings again, that then have a very similar result or experience. And that cement even more deeply the belief and and around and around it goes and let me just check this check oh you can't see my screen oh shoot that's weird what are you seeing at the moment then Tini? just seeing you and, and everyone unless oh. i've got the wrong view on has every can anybody see my screen is, is anybody else not see, seeing my screen? Oh, just me. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, someone else is right. Oh, I'll check my settings. I can see the screen. Okay, yeah, check your settings. And see if you can... Um, I don't know how to fix that. Does anybody know how to fix that? You can unmute yourself and, and tell us if you do know. I'm just looking at my display. It's probably just my connected somewhere that I haven't seen yet. So it's all okay. good. All right. Well, I'll carry on. And um, and I'm hoping that you're going to work that out. All right. So we go around and around in these, in these loops. And as an example of that, let's say we have the thought, I can't afford it. Like, could be anything. I can't afford that plane ticket. I can't afford that car. I can't afford that, uh, I don't know, cup of coffee. Could be anything, right? I can't afford it, but that's a thought. I can't afford it. And how does that thought, you know, make us feel? What, what feelings does it generate? Well, for some people, it could make you feel powerless. It, you could feel angry or jealous of people who can afford it. You could feel desperate. You could feel ugh, complacent or hopeless you know there's a lot of different ways that that could generate this depending on what person you know your own personal circumstances there are these feelings that are going to come out of that so then with that thought and those feelings we tend to attract things <laughs> to give us you know the the experience of that so you know we have accidents don't we like we could have a small car accident that could cost us a couple of grand to fix because bloody fixing cars costs a lot of money and some people don't have insurance and you know these things happen so you know this can happen and then what happens then we we, we have this belief well I'm not worth much I'm always broke you know that so you know then we come back to thinking I can't afford it which makes us feel this way and then we create all these other little accidents where we're always our money always seems to be bleeding um, out of our bank account due to this and that and pets and cars and house stuff or, or whatever it might be but it just keeps reinforcing the belief that I'm not worth much I'm always broke kind of thing which creates the thoughts and so on and so on and so on like around and around and around in this loop and sometimes we like we don't even know that we're doing this a lot of the time do we it's it's something that can be like quite unconscious and I know that a lot of you guys have you know have realizations when you're stuck in these things but there are some things that you haven't had realizations about and I haven't had realizations about and, when, and when they just go around and around and here's another example 
So someone might think, well, I need to lose weight before I can meet anybody. You know, I kind of would like to meet somebody one day and, and have a relationship, but I just, I don't look good enough at the moment. I've got to lose some weight, you know, before that can happen. And if that thought's going around in their head, then they might be thinking quite critically about themselves and feeling critical and frustrated, but lonely as well and angry with themselves and needy and lacking and unsatisfied and, and also pressured to lose weight. And then a feeling of kind of self-disgust so there's this awful like cocktail of feelings going around and thoughts that of course is going to make them push them into a corner and then of course they end up binge eating um, just to try and feel some love and which they get from food and then that just reinforces this belief nobody loves me nobody loves me and then I need to lose weight before I can meet anybody and then da 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 around and around the cycle um, can keep going. So it's a, it, it can be a not very nice place to be. And I'm sure you can all resonate with what I'm saying here. Um, and sometimes we don't know, like I said, that we're doing this until we have some kind of a crisis, which, you know, a health problem or a relationship problem or somebody dies or we have a car accident or something like that and then we go oh my god I've got to look at what I'm doing I've got to look at I, I can see now that I was kind of building up to this because of the way that I was thinking and feeling and and believing about my life and and we we kind of have a wake-up call sometimes which snaps us out of these programs that go round and around but otherwise we can just be sleepwalking around in these programs that just go round and around and, they, and it's nothing new. It's the same thoughts, the same feelings, creating the same stuff, having the same beliefs, and it just goes round and round and round on autopilot because that's what the brain is designed to do. It's designed to make things automatic. And so it just goes on and on and on until we have some kind of an intervention. And for these people... Like, well, ultimately, these beliefs that these people are thinking and, and believing are not the ultimate reality. They are not the reality, right? But they are these people's reality. They've made a reality out of this belief and these thoughts and feelings that has become real for them, you know, because they've given it power. And they now live inside of their own self-imposed limitations. But it's not the reality because it's always changing. You know, it's always fluxing around and lots of different people are having lots of different realities like this. So it's not, it's not the ultimate reality, but it's very real for them. So I just want to ask you guys a couple of questions and if you could just throw me out some answers. Um, so... This person here who believes that nobody loves her and that she needs to lose weight before she can meet anybody, let's say that she is she works in a large office and there's quite a lot of potential relationship material, you know, in her workplace. You know, there's a lot of single men that she could possibly form a relationship with. So what would happen to her in this situation? Has anybody got anything they'd like to say about that? If this person here with all of these beliefs and stuff is in the situation where there could be potential people, what would tend to happen? Has anybody got an answer for that? Well, she'd probably be a bit closed off because she's not feeling very good about herself. So she's not really emitting um, an open, available kind of energy. That's right. I agree. Does anybody else have anything to say about that? Um, she might not even see the potential because she's so closed off and so focused on herself. Or she yeah. might, you know, take them and be like, oh, they'll never be interested in me. I'm horrible. You know, that yeah. kind of thing. Exactly. That, that's so true. It's like that that kind of going around and around kind of becomes like a, a, a block, isn't it? It's like a screen that all that she can see is that. She can't even see those opportunities when they're actually there because this has clouded, like this has become her reality and it's totally clouded over 
her perception. So what about like this one, this person who feels, you know, not worth much and feels like they're always broke and that's kind of become a belief. What if this person decided to start their own business? Um, you know, I think that you can, you get the picture, don't you? And I think <clears throat> you can see that <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna sabotage it, aren't they? They're going to probably keep having accidents or keep making mistakes, which cost money, just to keep perpetuating this belief that they have. So it's it's kind of a, a um, really self defeating situation to be in, and we kind of got to ask ourselves, well. If I'm just going around and around in this stuff, then is there actually free will here? You know, where's the free will? If if what what I'm operating on are, are these old beliefs and, and these thoughts that come out of the beliefs and the old feelings, and it's just this program loop that goes around and around, then is there free will in that? You know, it's something to consider. Is it... You know, it, it's just like a whew. So where, you, uh, uh, carry on, John. Uh, so where does where does programming from outside come into this? So if you put if you go back to the previous slide, so mm -hmm. um, which one? This one here. So I can't afford it. Oh yeah. Um, like you give the example of somebody starting a business. Mm -hmm. uh, like I've done this. Uh, mm. I've started a business, I've believed in myself, but those around me, and I think this is one of the reasons I left Ireland, didn't mm. believe me and who, who did I think I was that could make it? And that's not your place. So you could have your own belief, but the influences from outside, you actually let those in too. Yeah, yep. And I guess that is a factor, isn't it, to, to always be aware of, but I guess essentially... You know, it's your choice whether you agree with those people or not, isn't it? It's your choice whether you take that on. And I know that it does make it harder if you have all those people around you. But sometimes the people around you act as mirrors as well, you know. Like sometimes um, what, what we think people are, are kind of insinuating towards us can be what we actually deeply kind of feel or haven't admitted that we feel about ourselves and so it's sometimes a bit of a, a mirroring thing that happens there but I have certainly found that if because my 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 family aren't don't even really know what I do or kind of have a deep insight about that and so I just kind of don't tell them all that much because it's just too conflicting for us to have those conversations and I used to let that bother me quite a lot but now I just think well if I'm totally comfortable with what I'm doing then and then they are you know and they are and that's the thing if I'm completely comfortable with with running a business and doing what I do and whatever then I find that that gets reflected to me on the outside and people tend to just mirror that back to me you know so it's it's an interesting com conversation um yeah and so why oh one other question I wanted to ask actually before we get to why we like this is if there's a whole like planet of people <laughs> going around like this like just in their own personal programs that are going around and around and around and around and they're not really thinking anything new or anything fresh it's all just the same old stuff creating the same old stuff around and around you know what is the impact on our world you know to have this happening does anybody have anything to say about that well just looking at that you know this the picture you've got there yeah the visual of the circle which is you know the energy of that loop they're in which yeah totally creates the energy of blocking that light yeah so you've got a whole world going around with their light dimmed yes and losing their connection to their true self absolutely and then what does that do for for like the world in general like the whole you know population our whole global kind of consciousness when we when we're all doing this does anyone have anything to say about that 
this is this is essentially just uh, lowering vibration. It's lowering frequency. Yeah. And when we get stuck in this, um, oh, so you can look at this and you can see that advertising, marketing, all the things that tell you that you're not good enough, mm -hmm. uh, everything that capitalism sort of um, puts out there to make you buy material shit. Mm -hmm. uh, actually all just lowering the vibration of the world because mm -hmm. it's constantly been fed to us that we're not good enough mm. we need to be this or we need to be that or we need to buy the latest thing or whatever yeah uh, and or we need a diet or whatever yeah so that the net result is lowering vibration of the planet mm, absolutely Okay, so, you know, why are we like this? Why are we like this, for God's sake? The reason is because we've lost connection with this. You know, we're so up here in our heads going around and around in these blimmin' loops that just create all these dramas and thoughts and feelings and on 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 that we kind of forget what we really are, that, that you know, our heart... Is, is not only an amazing for folks. Sorry? Oh, sorry. No, I'm just talking to my trucks. They didn't oh. go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you want to mute yourself, Christina? Yes, yes. sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Um, so, yes, we lost connection with this. And I, I, don't, I don't just mean um, the heart. I do mean the heart, but I also mean our, our eternal nature. You know, we, we forget who we are when we're going around and around and around and the problems and the thoughts and the beliefs and the blah, blah, blah. We forget that actually there's a part of us that is completely indestructible and undamageable. There is a part of us that never left home, never left its source, that is still completely one with that and carries on lifetime after lifetime and body after body there's this essence energy to us there's an eternal nature that we all have and and it's as simple as kind of thinking well it's it's the awareness that I know that I am here there's always an awareness that I am isn't there no matter what's going on in all the changing sphere of my life there is there is an essence there's a spark at the center of me and just knowing and just having that time to connect with our eternal nature is so, so important because it it takes the power away from all of this stuff and coming back to our heart, which as we're going to see is, is very, very important to letting the divine lead. So I just want to reference Nikola Tesla because he believed that the universe and everything in it from galaxies to atoms has one singular consciousness so you know he believes that it looks like we're all separate it looks like you're over there and I'm here and we're all these different bodies and all of that stuff and there's animals and there's plants and there's this and there's that and it's all spread out between time and space but that ultimately there's one consciousness which interpenetrates all of it and connects it all you know you would have heard about the unified field theory theory that there is this unified field that connects us all that's that that we are all extensions of and he says that my brain is only a receiver in the universe there is a core from which we obtain knowledge strength and inspiration so what he's saying is that we can connect to this field of you know this one field that we all really are and you could call that one field love because love is like this beautiful connecting energy or you could call it god or you could call it source you could call it whatever you like but i believe that this core that he's talking about that we, which we can obtain knowledge strength and informate inspiration this core that we can find within ourselves is our heart and this is actually the the doorway to this more infinite stuff the doorway out of the freaking programs so let me explain what I mean 
and why I think this. So when we experience elevated emotion, like gratitude or joy or love, then our bodily systems come into deeper harmony and resonance with each other. And this has been studied and researched by a, a organization called HeartMath, the HeartMath Institute, you might have heard of them before. And so they have, have researched and realized that when we feel gratitude, for example, we our, our heart starts syncing up with our brain in such a way that they become what is called coherent. So their rhythms start syncing with each other and they start to talk more efficiently to each other. They start to work together. And not only the heart and the brain, but the our hormones and, and the rest of our organs, and it all starts to come into this beautiful coherence. It's like the communication through the whole body starts to work and everything starts to work together really well. And you can relate this also to when we when we do this when we become harmoniously connected inside of ourselves we also become harmoniously connected to the one field of consciousness source god love the universe whatever you want to call that so you can see here that when this person is in fear the magnetic field that that is emitted by this person's heart which has also been studied by the way by um heart math and you can go on their website heartmath.org and check out lots of cool stuff on there um this this electromagnetic field of the heart has been measured and proven and it's shown that when we're in that kind of loop consciousness of going around and around in our own stuff right which is a fearful way of being we contract our energy contracts we kind of draw into ourselves in that fearful state but when we are in a state of love gratitude or joy we open up our field and our field is actually connecting with these larger fields of the planet of the galaxy you know we can link up and connect our field to all these other fields which connect to even larger fields which connect to even larger fields you know so it's like through our heart we're opening up into this larger reality where we're at, we're able to access all of this information because we open up to this unified field instead of closing up and shutting ourselves off from what could ultimately be so supportive and beautiful for us. Oh, you're a certified heart math pre Awesome. Well, you know exactly what I'm talking about then, Angela. That's amazing. Um, yeah, so it is the gateway to this. You know, here's a um, picture from HeartMath. And so, you know, what they're illustrating here is that these two people's energy fields are connecting and intermingling and, and there is information that is being passed from one energy field to the other. And that's how we are empathic, right? Because even if we are contracted and in fear, we're still interacting with other people's energy fields and we're still picking up information, you know, um, and but if we're in a space of love, we are, are much more equipped to be able to understand that information, to process it, to be stronger in, in, in our own self. So we're kind of able to utilize or, you know, realize what's ours and what's theirs and, and all of that stuff. But we're always doing this. We're picking up on other people, whether we're conscious of it or not, and we can do it consciously. And so this was a cool example, which which came from HeartMath as well of a boy coming into entrainment or you could call it kind of coherence with his dog so so you probably can't read what it says here because it's not a very good um, quality graphic but what it says here is there's a there's a dog called Mabel and there's a boy called Josh and at this part of the graph these are these are their heart rate rhythms so from there from here to here they're not in the same room. The dog and the boy are in separate rooms. And then Josh comes into the room where Mabel is here. 
in this bit and they and Josh is loving Mabel you know giving Mabel lots of love and you can see that the heart rhythms of the dog and the boy are very similar so they're it's their energy fields at this point have come together and are sharing you know information and are coming into entrainment with each other so the hearts are starting to beat at the same time as each other and then Josh leaves the room and Mabel wants Josh to stay and the heart rates go all different again so it's a it's a beautiful example of of what we what, there's so much more going on there's so much more going on there is a an visible part of us that is fully connecting with with reality in a way that our physical senses can't process and don't process and we can access so much through our hearts so when we know this stuff we can kind of think well what would be the wisest energy to be in to make decisions from you know where should I make decisions from should it be <laughs> from this stuff the beliefs and the thoughts and you know the stuff that goes around and around and around would it be wise for me to trust that and believe in that and put my faith in that and make decisions from that or would it be wise to open up my heart using joy gratitude love or, or whatever um, those elevated emotions to to access this larger field which ultimately is my larger self it's it's an extension of my body it's the larger me would it make sense for me to open up and see what I can access from there so when we live from the the truth that we're all connected because I don't know about you but I mean, that's my truth. And, and I don't know how you felt in that meditation just now. But what I wanted to help you to feel or just to, to kind of really put in place in your own mind or for you to really understand experientially for yourself is, you know, are you separate? Because this is what our our um, reality seems to keep telling us and our physical eyes you know keep saying that to us we're separate I'm here you're there I'm solid I'm not I'm not mixing with everything else what are you talking about of course I'm separate but there is a deeper reality that to that isn't there that we we feel this connection and if we live from the truth that we are all connected because that's the ultimate truth rather than that we're separate and limited then we actually can open up this personal potential because our definition of what we are expands exponentially. You know, if I know myself to just be this, this person that I was born to, these parents, and they gave me this name, and I have all these stories and these past traumas and these different things that happen and, and these beliefs and these preferences and, you know, blah, 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 and, and that's me, that's what I am, that's who I am, and that's it. You know, if I'm going to say that to myself then I'm really really limiting my experiences aren't I and what I can bring for the world and that's the most important thing here is I'm blocking off the potential amazingness that I could allow through me for the freaking planet and that's that's the really the crux of it isn't it because when we cut ourselves off we're not only hurting ourselves but we are depriving this world of the light that could be coming through us for everybody else. So when we know that we're connected, then we know we're bigger than this thing, this little body in this, like, you know, life, that I am this larger thing. What if I opened up to that and let it use this portal that I, I am, you know, this body, which I kind of see as like a portal to allow the divine through. What if I opened up and let that larger energy in and through me? What could happen? So letting the divine lead really means creating space for that larger, higher connected self to run the show rather than defaulting to the limited, dysfunctional, habitual, personal programs. And the portal to that is through the heart. And so there are three powerful ways that I want to share with you and also practice with you tonight to do this, to um, 
to let the divine lead. And the first one I want to talk about is about following your inspiration. So can any of you tell me why that would be a, a powerful way to let the delight, divine lead by following your inspiration? Can anybody jump in and share that? That's sort of coming from the universe. It's um, from without um, and comes into our inner being um, without our um, intellectual things getting in the way. It just yeah. it happens. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Awesome. So kind of what you're saying there is that it's coming, it's not coming from here. It's coming from here, isn't it? So I've purposely made this light brighter to show that, you know, the inspiration comes through that open heart. It comes through from the larger self. And, and that larger self knows us so much more intimately then we think we know ourselves, you know, because we are so blinded by these bloody programs that we we don't even, we can't kind of see the, we can't even know what we want half the time because we're just going around and around in these loops. A lot of the times thinking that we're lacking and thinking that if I get over here or have this or whatever, that I'm going to feel better. And we can sometimes get on that, you know, roller coaster. We don't actually know what truly what it truly is sometimes that we need or that we're really wanting or looking for, but this larger self knows and knows exactly what will help us to feel completely fulfilled, knows our the, the highest you know purpose for for this lifetime, what it could be. And so it's more about just listening and really feeling and here to get that inspiration to to really listen to it. And sometimes we can become so blocked up with this stuff going around and around that we find it really hard to find this inspiration to begin with. You know, sometimes we've we've shut ourselves down so many times and so much that we don't even let ourselves feel the inspiration because we just think there's no way I can have it or be it or do it. So I'm just not even going to let myself entertain a, even a tiny bit of it. And so for, for a person in that situation, it, it would be really letting go of a lot of these thoughts and feelings and beliefs maybe to begin with. But you don't have to start with massive inspiration. You don't have to start with changing the world. You know, you can start with what do I feel inspired by right now? I want to listen to some music. I'm going to put some music on. Put some music on. I'm going to follow that inspiration. I'm doing a bit of dancing. And then, oh, I just got a thought. What if I, I could do this for dinner? You know, oh, I'm going to follow that inspiration. I thought, oh, I just had another inspiring thought. I could invite my friend around. I invite my friend around. She comes around. We're having a great time. And then she tells me about, you know, something. And then before I know it, I've followed my inspiration. And I've, I've ended up in this awesome, you know, could be anything opportunity or I've met someone or I've made a really great new friend or, or anything like that so um okay awesome see you Angela and so you know we don't have to we don't have to pressure ourselves to come up with this amazing inspiration if we just go with what's happening now what's the inspiration now 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 we can um we can follow those breadcrumbs. So the second way that's really powerful with letting the divine lead, which is something that I've been, oh, been practicing in the last few months and especially leading up to running this retreat, retreat that I just ran. And oh my God, it just totally saved my life. I tell you, um, because I was so stressed, you know, kind of about how many people were going to be there and all of that. I got caught up in all of that kind of stuff and the filling of this retreat. So what I did was, practiced offering and what I mean by that is that when we get inspiration right because we all get inspired every now and then oh hold on we all get inspired every now and then and 
what do we do with it when we get it? You know, this is the thing. Okay, so maybe you do have a kind of biggish idea. You think, oh, I, I could start this business. I could, I could do this training or I could create this charity or I could, you know, we have some beautiful big idea that that's win, 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 win for everybody. And it just feels so amazing. So you get that inspiration. So then what do you do with it? You know, so there's a few ways that you can respond in this situation. And the first one might be, well, oh, here's this inspiration. Wow, wow, wow. Oh no, but I can't do that. There's no way I can do that. I don't have the money. I don't have the time. Who the hell am I? Who's going to listen to me? I've got no experience. I'm a nobody. Nobody wants to, to, to hear from me. I can't do it. You know, so the self-doubt completely taken over and just shut down that idea completely. So that's one way <laughs> that we could respond to inspiration. The second way could be that we have this amazing idea and they're like, oh my God, I love this idea so much. I'm going to do it. I'm going to write this list. I'm going to do this tomorrow. I'm going to do this the next day. And then I'm going to do this. And I'm going to make sure I have it all done by Friday. And then I'm going to do blah, 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 blah. And you go off on this crazy tangent and just try and get it all done. And it's all your responsibility and you're doing it all on your own and it's all on your shoulders. And guess what happens when that happens is that you burn out big time and you'll find yourself just completely not able to function because you just absolutely exhausted yourself with all of that energy and so that's not really a good way either a really good way though the third way is to offer it so the third way is we're using our wisdom and saying I have this amazing inspiration and it's going to be that for the higher good for me and for everybody as it comes through me. But I understand that this inspiration isn't me. It's not the personal me. It's not those stories. You know, it's not that round and round and round stuff. It came from my larger self, from more of a divine energy. And therefore, I'm not going to grab onto it and try and make an identity out of it and say, it's mine, it's me, look at me, um, I'm a failure if it doesn't happen, I'm a success if it does happen, look at, look at this thing that I've done, it's all about me and so on. Instead, I'm going to say, this is yours, divine, thank you for inspiring it through me. And I, I say, yes, I will allow it, I will definitely work with you on this. And in order to do that, I'm going to give it back to you. You inspired this through me. You know exactly what to do. You know how to line things up to make this all, you know, work out in a really beautiful way. So I'm not going to burden myself with it. I'm not going to carry the weight of it and, you know, make my life all heavy because of it. I'm going to give it back to you and I'm going to stay in alignment and I'm going to wait for the inspirations because I'm going to get those ideas coming to me and they're going to feel fun. And they're going to feel like flow and I'm going to follow them and it's going to be a wicked ride. It's going to be so much fun. But whenever I feel myself going into stress and struggle and strain, I know I've taken it personally. I've said, ah, oh, it's mine. I've got to, you know, make sure I look good here with this. And it's all about me. And, and at that point, I offer it back. And so it's this kind of like process of continually offering it over and allowing the divine to take care of it while you stay open and just follow the inspiration as it comes follow the the, the breadcrumbs as you get inspired to talk to that person that person you whatever um, you'll find that there's a progression that takes place as you let it go because the science of this is that because you're becoming lighter by letting it back to the divine and letting the divine lead with it then you are in a higher vibration and open where you can actually receive ideas rather than getting caught up in the whole loopy thing again of I've got to get this done and this is all on me and struggle 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 and all the beliefs and lacks and all that coming up which blocks out the good ideas by giving it over we we lighten ourselves up to a place where we can actually work with the divine. So I hope you all understand what I'm talking about when I talk about offering. And so then the next thing, the third way is to embody gratitude. And of course, gratitude, as we've talked about, opens up the heart. It is the 
scientifically beautifully divine way to get us into that larger energy field of the one consciousness so that we can find all this um you know well information and inspiration and and support and and just everything that we need in there to to kind of lift us and keep us going and it also puts us in the perfect energy to receive so gratitude is a extremely powerful thing to practice it's I reckon at the highest vibration that we can access um, in this form and so when we practice it and practice it with littler and littler things we are literally getting ourselves into the prime vibration to receive this inspiration that we have decided that we're going for so hi <laughs> how's everybody feeling about that who has any something to say? Who's Not anything? everyone at once. <laughs> yeah. I'll put my video back on. Um, just listening to you talk about inspiration and gratitude. I'm getting all these inspirations and I'm feeling so grateful. It's part of why I love <laughs> listening to you because it just feels good. <laughs> you know, and I was thinking about because you were talking about when you first introduced yourself, like people that are feeling stuck outside of their soul's purpose. Yeah. Feeling like, all right, well, I kind of buy into the idea that our purpose is to enjoy ourselves. Like we're not meant to hear to be here to, to suffer and to struggle. Yeah. But then like it kind of gets confusing because I could be doing something that's supposed to be my purpose like I'm here to help okay I'm here I'm helping it's not feeling very good sometimes <laughs> <laughs> like isn't it supposed to feel good or though it's not my purpose so I'm kind of exploring in my mind and maybe you want to speak to that Susan if it if you have something to say like about why I can still be like Un, not unhappy but there could be moments where something else is going on like I lose that connection perhaps and that's why yeah. it starts to not feel good yeah 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 even though the, the actual like activity it. I'm doing is the thing that I'm supposed to be doing like I'm guide like my divine has guided me to do this thing yeah and then I pinch myself off from the good thing and the good feeling and it cut off my connection to my heart or whatever mm -hmm. get all stuck in the ego get mad at someone or whatever you yeah. know and then yeah. it's not feeling fun anymore yeah and that's just the the process isn't it of that we all go through isn't it we have those expansive feelings and we, we get in the flow and then something hits our stuff and hits one of those loops and then the loop gets activated and it starts going around and around and and then so the thing you know to get us out of that the quickest is really self-awareness you know oh I'm aware okay there's that feeling, there's that loop again, come back to my heart, you know, and so on and so on. And I guess we're always going to get triggered back into that. And I guess it's just as we practice more and more, we the gaps become longer, you know, between the triggers, possibly. Mm. But, um, but possibly not. I think possibly yeah. not. It doesn't necessarily mean we're doing something wrong if we're getting no. an onslaught of them. No, it doesn't because that could just be the life circumstances at that particular time you know exactly which exactly. as you know I've walked I stepped into <laughs> the fire so yeah. here I am but Absolutely. but the it, any no matter how many times it happens I have to keep coming back yeah absolutely and I think that you know through practicing gratitude for the past kind of month or so like on a real regular I feel like I have I really feel like it's shifted my vibration in such a way that things just aren't bothering me as much at the moment but I don't know I mean I invite you all to play with this and I've heard lots of people say you know in their own lives about practicing gratitude I've always thought oh, practicing gratitude yeah blah 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 like everybody does everyone talks about that it's like so overdone right 
but freaking heck man it is a science <laughs> i'm not joking like it really gets you in that field and it freaking opens up your heart and you just are in this high vibration where i mean because the ultimate thing is is that we want to feel that we've made it right because we're all trying to get somewhere we all think well i need to do this and that because that's going to make me feel better but ultimately it's that amazing feeling of gratitude that we're trying to get to. It's that amazing feeling of gratitude that we think we need to do this to achieve, but we can just feel it now. And if we just feel it now, we just start to feel so at ease with, with all of it and, and just like, I've already made it. You know, I've already arrived. I don't need to get anywhere. Look how fucking cool this is. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my God, I'm so happy. You know, And, and in that energy, oh my God, I feel like you just start to attract you know awesome stuff without even really doing anything or thinking anything about it and um and I don't know maybe in that energy you're not don't get so triggered but I don't want to stand by that completely because I know that in the human experience we are here to go through all the range of emotions we're not here to 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 hide from them unfortunately as a lot of us would like to do <laughs> we're here to I believe just allow them to be as they are and and let them through and and the cool thing is is that even when we have gratitude for those shitty things we don't want to feel we let them through like if I'm feeling something yucky and I think oh my god I am so grateful that I can feel at the moment I can actually feel this I'm in the moment with myself this is a profound freaking moment I'm having right now this thing's coming up this is so beautiful you know if I can trip myself into that my heart literally opens up and absorbs whatever it is that's coming up in my body and just goes oh come here and loves it into just complete deliciousness <laughs> it's not even a problem anymore you know so like I just think there's so much we can do with gratitude that it's this amazing healing power that we have kind of untapped um yeah so I kind of went above and beyond what you were trying to ask there Susanna but no, you actually, you actually totally like went right into the next thing I was inspired because I used to talk about oh. radical gratitude, which is oh. like being great, literally being grateful for the shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, and I, I was thinking it's like a muscle because like yeah, it is. is available, but sometimes it feels hard to kind of access it. Like it's like, oh, it like. I can think about things, but I just don't feel it. Yeah. But then I think like the more I practice that radical gratitude of being grateful for the shit, the yeah. more it's like, it's there. It's like accessible. It's always there. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. And not because like, there's always something to be grateful for. No, 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 no. It's not like, <laughs> oh, I'm grateful for the cloud because then it'll rain and then the flowers will grow. No. I'm grateful for the freaking cloud that makes me feel terrible and dreary. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm grateful, really like grateful for the growth, you know. I'm grateful for the challenges. I'm grateful yeah. for that person who pissed me off, you know, that oh showed me that I have that energy. I'm grateful for just, ah, oh, it's just, it's all so beautiful if you can, it's just that being in that one moment, that you, when this one moment has never been repeated, and I think it's just a magic magical magic thing. thank you yeah so i'm just, so glad you carried on talking because it was like perfectly right what i was on the tip of my <laughs> tongue as well does anybody have did anybody else have anything they want to share or ask about that stuff Insp we just <coughs> inspiration how do you trust it the the inspiration how do you trust the inspiration how do you trust the inspiration well okay because it feels good that I mean that's that's how I kind of trust it it feels fun it feels flowing it feels exciting and 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 that for me is more trustworthy than something that feels scary or fearful or you know cautious or um contracted or something but I think you know, it it's, it takes a while to be able to really go with it, though. I mean, possibly, if if it's something that you're quite new to, because it does kind of feel like you're being asked 
to believe before you see you know quite a lot of the time and and as human beings we we are thinking usually that we are physical we often want to see things and have proof before we will believe and follow you know along with something however when we start working with our spiritual selves and those higher selves and starting to tap into that larger energy it's the freaking other way around and that's why we've got to get used to it it's about following what we don't see but what we feel rather than believing what we see you know and so we've just got to get used to that. And and the best way to start to trust it is just to flip and start doing it with small things. And then you'll start noticing that, oh, wow, you know, this happened and this happened and maybe I can trust and then go a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. And yeah, like that, I would say. Yeah, it's just, um, I know... <clears throat> I, I jacked in, I just handed in the resignation two weeks ago. Oh, and, cool. And I have nothing to go to. And I've just this trust that something will come, something will happen. Um, <laughs> well, okay. The so what, what, was it that, that, what was it that inspired you to hand in your resignation? And, and keep talking, I'm just going to turn my light on, okay? Um, the, I needed to put an end to that part of my life. Right. Um, I was still working in Palmerston North and I was flying from Christchurch to Palmer. Mm -hmm. And the company wasn't aligning to my values, didn't like what it stood for. Yeah. So have you got an inspiration about where you're going now, uh, about what you'd like your next steps to look like or what you'd like to step into now? Yeah, I think so. But it's just... Cool. Of so much in the lane that it's that it's yeah, really it's scary. It's freaking scary, isn't it? It's fucking it's yeah. scary. Yeah, yeah, it is. It yeah. is, and that's why this is perfect for you to be here tonight because we're going to do a meditation in a minute that that can help you move into that next um, that next bit that you're heading towards. Mm -hmm. um, has anybody else got anything they want to sh want to say about the the information that I shared? Anything you want to ask or comment? Um, I think I agree with you, Susan, that inspiration mm. feels good. Um, mm. Sometimes if you don't go with how you're feeling, it'll come back and um, you, you, you know that when it comes back that you have to do it. It's, yeah. If you're not going to do it, um, it'll hit you in the face till you actually listen. To yeah. what's actually going on yeah or some like somebody will come up to you and sort of say well why haven't you done this or why aren't you doing that and you're <laughs> like um oh, i was just thinking about doing that or going to do it um so yeah that's what i found about inspiration it just um it just feels good to do and mm. um, so, like if you um if you close your mind off you, you don't want to do it however if you just open up and sort of just go with the flow and relax mm. um and get into it it just it just feels right and um yeah sometimes you think well why didn't i do that beforehand or why didn't i let myself do that <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. does happen eh? yeah yeah, yeah. my chooks are on bed so that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i think it gets I think the more that we allow the inspiration through and we allow ourselves to go with it, the more the more comes, the more comes, the more comes. And we we can just find ourselves getting on these roles of of the inspiration and just and that's kind of you know living in the flow. It's a beautiful place to be. I feel like that's where we all kind of want to get to, you know, is that beautiful flowing kind of state that we can live in. All right, so if no one's got anything else to say or ask, then I just want to lead you guys through another meditation where we're going to practice these three things. So we're going to access some inspiration and practice offering it and then practice gratitude. So we're going to use the muscle of our gratitude to to magnetize this beautiful inspiration to us 
So is everybody ready for this? It looks like you're all muted and good to go. All right. So closing your eyes again. And just taking a deep breath, letting go. Breathing into your heart. And as you breathe into your heart, just remember that beautiful light that you felt in there at the beginning in that first meditation. And start to feel it around you and inside you and this lovely open heart. Imagine that your heart is opening to that larger self, that larger consciousness that you are. Imagine there's a portal in your heart that's starting to open up to connect with the whole universe. And just asking yourself, asking your heart, really, bringing it right into your heart, what am I most inspired by at the moment? What's really inspiring me? And it doesn't matter if it's small or big or whatever it is. Breathe into your heart and ask that question. Ask yourself, am I willing to act on this inspiration? Am I willing to follow this prompt from my divine self wanting to partner with me? Am I willing to say yes and go for this ride, this adventure? And then saying to yourself, I agree to, to step in this direction with you, divine self. I really want to experience this inspiration working through me. And I want to be a vessel for this, for the world. I know that you, divine know exactly how this is going to play out me the limited mind or the lower self doesn't know that i don't know how it's going to come to place i don't know what it's all going to look like and how it's going to creatively manifest through me i don't have the answers but i know that you do so i'm going to give this back to you 
Thank you for this inspiration. And I'm going to wait for those ideas to come into my mind that are going to lead me on the trail. I trust that you're taking care of this. You inspired this through, through me. Therefore, you can do it. You are taking this on. And I'm not holding on to any heaviness about it, any weight about it. I totally trust that you've got this. And I'm going to stay happy, stay aligned, keep my heart open. And I'm just going to go with the prompts as I get them. And I thank you. I thank you so much in advance for the manifestation of this beautiful inspiration. I offer and give and feel complete gratitude in advance for this having already happened. So I want you to make pictures in your mind of this inspiration that you're feeling inspired by the end of that or the result of that or the fruition of that. I want you to pretend that it's already happened and you're completely so utterly and totally grateful for it. And just make believe, just really get into your imagination and just pretend it's happened. How does it feel? saying thank you, thank you, thank you for this beautiful materialization. Thank you for the fact that this has happened. Thank you. And really feel your gratitude, your deep gratitude for this outcome having already happened. So now you have activated something very powerful within you. And from now on, this inspiration is starting to flow. This idea, whatever it is, is coming into material reality. And any time you start to feel in any way stressed or struggling about it or straining or worried. That is your instant trigger, your wake-up call to come back into alignment, to open your heart, to give it back to the divine and let the divine take care of it, to give gratitude and come into alignment and to just Act on the little, fun, exciting prompts that you're getting. Staying in the flow and moving in this direction. Imagine yourself carrying on after tonight over this next week imagine and visualize yourself now that you have some triggers coming up you you start to feel worried or anxious about this inspiration but it wakes you up and you get yourself into alignment you give it back to the divine 
Ah, you let go of the burden, you free yourself up and feel all like open and grateful. You give gratitude for it having already happened and you just stay in that delicious place and let the ideas come and flow. Just imagine yourself doing this over this next week. Okay, and then slowly bringing yourself back to everyday consciousness, wiggling your toes and your fingers, taking a deep breath and coming back and opening your eyes. So let's check in with everybody and just see where everybody's at as we finish off this evening. So, so I'll start with you, Joanne, just because you're next to me in the on my screen. <laughs> Pick on you. Um, so tell me, were you able to follow along with that? Like, did you have an inspiration you were, you're working with, and and how did that go for you? And you're on mute. I just need to remind you. <laughs> Yeah, it, I mean, I could follow along. It was quite good, and I managed to um, feel really enthusiastic about doing it as well. Cool. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Awesome. Good stuff. So what about you, Cherie? Did you have an inspiration you were working with, and were you able to? Yes, so, yeah. Yeah. Um... Because what I find often, which I have discovered over the years, I get can get a lot of inspiration, but it, it comes from my head. Right. <laughs> and that's the inspiration that, like, I get really excited about something and I ask, it's going to be awesome and I'm going to do this and this and this and this. And then a month later, I'm going, oh, that was a really dumb idea. <laughs> it felt really good at the time. You know, it, it, it felt good. Yeah. But what I've been learning lately is about, is when I have the inspiration that I can tune in and it feels right. It's not right. So the feeling good, it's the feeling right. Ah, that's good. And it's like a real, yeah, just a real feeling of feeling right, then, you know, then that's the right decision. So today I, um, so I had the inspiration a few weeks ago after working online. I've been working online for, you know, since COVID, that I should maybe go back and get in person and then a sort of a series of events happened where this room came available and um I sort of it felt really right but I was still getting a bit of it means money and it means I've got to make sure I can pay my bills and then there's all the outgoings and then there's the commitment and I can't like being at home and so all that sort of stuff came up but it still felt right so I've still gone ahead with it and I signed the lease today oh it's exciting, but I also have had quite a bit of external um, input, let's say, from people who are not encouraging. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight, this was really good just to reconnect in with that inspiration and feel like, yeah, it's exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. Awesome. And does that help you when you offer it? Like, does that feel... Do you feel lighter when you just... Yeah, it, feel, it feels like I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. Part of it, yeah. Yeah. So it's like all the things that people are saying to me, like other practitioners and stuff, other naturopaths, you know, the doom and gloom of it all. Mm. It's, it, it's that feeling of I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. It's not my job. Yes, exactly. Mm. It's not your job, man. Mm. Good stuff. Yeah, that was good. Thank you. All right, Mariam, tell us how that went for you. <laughs> oh, it was very nice. Um, actually, it took me a minute to like get to land back into my body. <laughs> so yeah, right. Well done. Um, you know, I, I'm 
the inspiration that came, to mm -hmm. be honest, is something that uh, it wasn't anything new, but it's something that's been on the surface of my mind. And it was two things. Um, it was like one was health, which is like I'm mm -hmm. focusing really, really heavily on my my health right now and like cleaning my my body from the inside out. And um, then collaboration was the other thing that came through. And it's something that's been heavy on my mind um, in terms of expanding my, my work and my abilities and sharing my abilities with other people, um, not just here, but not just in New Zealand, but in back home in Canada as well. So mm -hmm. that, that inspiration was like, just kind of been peppered in my day to day um, lately, but actually like giving myself space to like let that come through fully uh, felt very potent. And so uh, I'm, I feel I'm, I'm excited about it and I feel encouraged uh, as she said. And um, I know that I'm, I just have like more uh, reassurance that I'm, on the right path but that's that is a focus for me for now and uh yeah I'll ride that wave <laughs> nice yeah oh, I could say on. more but I'm gonna ramble so I'll leave it like that <laughs> <laughs> <I'll ramble. laughs> At least, you know, I love me a good ramble <laughs> yeah thank, you. thank you so much thank you mm -hmm. Nicola how are you going Nicola Are you still there, Nicola? Sorry, I've just oh. done Misha. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Waffling on. <laughs> um, Start again. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, that just like um, the meditation and that just I felt lighter and. Um, more I just you know like um um elevated doors just subtly opening and a bit more light coming through rays coming through mm. and um just uh, yeah and a a better just a more centered and so my left and right brain isn't kind of struggling back and forth or, uh, you know, talk, I've got into a more aligned place cool. I guess yeah, through your meditation, um, yeah, and just like, um, like you said, try and align with the universe, but you worry about um, uh, letting go, uh, because what is that going to mean? Could that mean that life is going to happen to me and I won't like it? Or Yeah, that's, that's a you really, know, really, really popular fear yeah right right yeah. okay that's kind of yeah and the voice in the subconscious yeah jumps up I guess that's your know, um survival sort of thing I don't know absolutely yeah. totally yeah primitive yeah yeah mm -hmm. or or the other what was going on just because of some of the things I don't have control of they will be choices that will be made for me and maybe actually I can work with them and they won't, you know, maybe because it, they might be better ones than what I could make for myself. That was the other thing that come in. Right. Yeah. You know, so um, just, just being okay with it and, and peaceful regardless. Yeah. Oh, that's so, really nice. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Yeah. I just want to speak to that fear because that's a quite a common one, as I said, and that, right. you know, when, when we want to move beyond, you know, the, the habitual programs that we're used to being and that, of course, that fear comes up because it's, you know, the, um, it's the programs talking pretty much <laughs> saying, don't leave me because <laughs> yeah. I don't want to die. You know, I want to keep the program going. Um, but mm -hmm. because we don't have a reference point for what it's like outside the program, because we, all we know is the program, then yes. it seems to make us, even though the program might suck, it, it tends to make us want to choose the familiar over what could be ultimately so much better. 
But mm. I think the guiding yeah. thing just has to be if it doesn't feel good, you know, it's not the right direction and and it'll keep not feeling good and keep not. And do we really want that? And I think, you know, really choosing self-love is choosing what, either choosing to let go of what doesn't feel good or choosing to step into what does, you know. And even though we don't know what the details of that are going to be if we are mm. following what feels good truly in our hearts when we're in that connected space and it feels good and we just know it's right like Cherie says then honestly like there is there, oh following that is is what we that that is the calling from our higher from that larger energy calling mm. to us so we're either going to say nah sorry too busy mate I want to go on my programs you know for longer which is fine because that's a choice right that a lot of us are making but mm-hmm. or we we go yes please I want to feel better man just take me and and it's not that we even have to really do 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 to to have these things happen we can just just surrender and say I am willing man I am willing to feel better and and just doing that can activate all of these beautiful miracles that take us so yeah right yeah yeah okay okay Susanna thank you no worries I haven't come to you have I no Mm -hmm. so I I was feeling inspired by something before you did the meditation so I thought okay well that that'll work and it was really interesting because it's almost like when you said the part about imagine it's already happened yeah like I went from feeling really good to like starting to feel constricted about it oh and it's almost like I have a dysfunctional relationship with my inspirations coming to fruition that I don't exactly know what that is. I, I it was interesting because I was listening to Sheree and I was going, maybe it's not the maybe it's not the right one. Maybe it's because it's not the right one, you know, because logic would dictate that if I if it came to fruition, I should feel good about that. But there's something, I think there's something, there's some sort of block. And of course, because it has to do with my business and I, you know, that there's a lot there. I think mm-hmm. that that might be what it is. Um, mm. but like what you were just saying about self-love if it doesn't feel good like I stepped back from my business because it stopped feeling good yeah right and what actually funnily enough one of the questions I asked on your on your retreat is it possible to do that from a place of joy mm. you know so I haven't got the answer just yet <laughs> mm. I think I do I just maybe I just don't know how and that whole thing of just really surrendering and like it's almost like if I could follow the inspiration, but I would know right now that it was going to happen just like this. And I was going to be able to succeed and I can pass every level, you know, yeah. but, but like that whole surrender of like, Oh, so I don't actually get to know how it's going to unfold. I just have to follow it. Oh, that's scary. Yeah. That's pretty scary. It, it's scary to the, to the personal side of us, isn't it? To the yeah. part that wants to, yeah. Like you say, have everything all ticked out. Tick, that, that's how our, our, our instinctual minds work isn't it we want to know we're going to be safe first before we will agree <laughs> like but, I can see it working yeah. out but I don't know if I can it's that safety piece I think I just don't know if I can see myself being safe mm. or something there's something terrifying in there for me so yeah Maybe I have to come back and do a hypnosis session with you or something yeah totally and I mean sometimes I guess if you're working if it's really that scary then maybe it is better to just do smaller steps you know maybe there is something mm. that you you obviously need to work through first because it should feel a little bit scary like of course because otherwise you're not sh- you're not really stretching are you but it but to feel absolutely terrifying might be maybe you're going a wee bit too far too so you know but the um but yeah, there should be a sense of you going beyond a bit of a bit of fear, but it's also like really exciting, you know. It's that exciting fear because we're all capable of so much more, you know, because it's not even us. All we're doing is just learning to come outside of those personal programs and allow this bigger thing to freaking work through. 
it's not even about I'm got to do this and I got to be this and I got to look this and I got to. It's just about getting the fuck out of the way to allow this other thing, you know, entry because that larger self has has this beauty, juicy, yummy stuff that it's going to share with. The global consciousness and I think that that's kind of the way that we need to start looking at it when you look at the state of our blooming world at the moment mm. it's you know one of the re- main reasons it is the way it is is because we are all so focused on me me freaking me I gotta get to the top I gotta survive I gotta have it for me I can't do that because then that would mean this about me and blah 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 but we've got to start thinking about we and taking into consideration the, the collective benefit of every decision and, and if every company did that it would be absolutely a completely different planet to live on wouldn't it be but you know we can't do like you know change all the decisions for the people in the companies but what we can do is start to operate this way for ourselves because ultimately what we are going to find is that we feel the way we've always wanted to feel when we set our personal self over there and just allow this beautiful delicious light through us for for us but for everyone and then oh my god it's just so it just feels so good that I I feel like that's the heaven on earth that we've been kind of looking for Mm -hmm. but we we hide within this personal kind of drama <laughs> and we don't let it in yeah so anyway yeah all right cool well let's go over to Tanika. how are you going I'm good I'm good so what <laughs> came well what's been going on lately with me is I'm setting up my new website and my business and all my offers and I've just been going round and round in circles and, oh, should I do it this price or this price? No, should I offer this first or that last or whatever? And mm-hmm. <laughs> I was literally going through this like just before the call. And <laughs> it, what happened in the meditation was just like, remember like love and fun. Like that's what it's all about really. And just um, do things that are fun and easy and simple because there is a simple way of doing it and I've and it was when I was first doing it I was like wow this is so simple and I've just complicated it in my head and been like is this too expensive is this not and just kind of forgotten the whole purpose of what I'm doing yeah so it was great to kind of come back to that absolutely and that's so easy to do eh? is it's come up into the head and get all caught up in the details and you know especially yes. like how much money am I going to make and and all that kind of all that detaily stuff can really and it's important to think about that stuff for sure but you know yes. to be ultimately led by the heart and and mm-hmm. to allow that and bring those questions into the heart and with your guidance like you've probably been practicing and yeah. and it just opens up this whole other perspective that can really guide us you know so cool how we've got this access you know to this massive like the whole one unified field like we Mm -hmm. are that we have access to all of the resources that we could possibly need and you know it's just Mm -hmm. are we going to believe that or are we going to stay caught up in that loop hey yeah exactly Mm -hmm. and it's just about yeah just getting out of the way like get out of the way (laughs) just let it just let it happen um and another something that's come up for me is also you know when you're thinking about what you can offer people is don't think about you know like you said changing the whole world just think Mm. of one person that you you know that life you've impacted in some way and do it all for them yeah or do you know or do it for the person that you were like three five years ago or a year ago just do it for that one person and then it's so meaningful and you don't get caught up well it helps not to get caught up in all the the overwhelm exactly yeah exactly that's beautiful awesome thank you okay john i haven't come to you yet have i how did you find that meditation yeah the whole with your job you're moving into your next can you see how can you see how I'm trying to guide you there into that yeah no I I know how this is all going to play out but I think it comes back into um it's back into fear 
that when fear creeps in, you go into mind, and you yeah. only go into mind, you go into thought, and then you think within the 3D realm instead of thinking of the infinite possibilities. Totally. So um, That's a really good way of putting that, John. Thank you for yeah. that. Mm. There's a few a few big things came up for me there tonight. Um, Cherie had said something earlier about, you know, and I had asked this question, but I, I sort of answered it myself, that how do you know how to you trust your, um, your inspiration? Mm -hmm. So I get messages and downloads in the middle of the night, and one of them I got a few nights ago was, it was clear as day, just straight out, feel with the heart, don't think with the mind. Mm. and that was that just came through loud and clear all the time mm. the other thing that came through there tonight um for me was that i don't know whether it's just me but if i don't get out of the way something's going to push me out of the way <laughs> yeah, right. you know, it's true it will this is the oh. midlife crisis this is the car accident this is the you know the 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 death-defying illness you know the terrible thing that happens yeah. these are the things that push us out of the way aren't yeah. they we don't do it ourselves if we don't do it ourselves <laughs> something will push us out of the way so we have to just, <laughs> we'll have to just trust and we'll have to just run with it um but yeah. i got so much from tonight and stuff i already knew but stuff that i need reaffirmed and i was just <laughs> like oh <laughs> this is i know how this all works now because here's a group of people all experiencing the same thing and it's like yeah <laughs> you just have to trust now yeah absolutely so um doella how are you going lovely hi hi well i'm glad i managed to go through couple of hours of this gosh I haven't been able to do that for a while oh. well no literally <laughs> I've been going through this thing for the last couple of months and um my um yeah it's to do with my vision it's just so teary and oh I see it's really, yeah, you're right. and it's been really painful oh, and very... um, so yeah taking medication and blah blahs and all sorts of things and wow you know, um, mm. so, um, one of the things I, um, I, um, I, I, the whole thing was so awesome. I got so much out of everything and it's always helps to, um, um, listen to these things again and again, because mm. every time you listen to the same thing, where you get something different from it. Yeah. Um, so at the moment, um, um, again, I will talk about the, the practice offering, which is such a great way. I mean, that's um, such a um, looking, looking at things from a different perspective. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you do the practice offering, so you let it um, come through you, let the divine come through you and offer... Um, it to the world and you're just used as a vessel mm. and this is the sort of thing I do anyway already with my you know angel messages and things like that and yeah why don't I think of that that was a burst of inspiration I said oh yeah <laughs> I know it's like taking that channeling to the next level it's yeah. like yeah. embodying the whole you know process of channeling but your life yeah. is channeling you know yeah <laughs> That's awesome. I think that's like, boom, that was like a light bulb moment for me there. Going, oh, oh. <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. It's going to be so much easier. Oh, God, oh. you're right. Tell me about it's it. Easy. It's way easier. Really? <laughs> Only for to think about it. Yeah, take your mind out of it totally. You just go, oh, and you go, give it to me. <laughs> yeah inspire me word, let it go let it flow let it go. <laughs> inspire me <laughs> so um yeah that's awesome um and um at the moment i'm i'm focusing on um on um i guess health yeah because um, i've been 
sort of what you were talking about before. If you don't do anything about it, you get overtaken by it. And then you have that, um, um, what do you call it, um, the tower moment. And, you know, you have that bike accident, for instance, you know, and you have to deal with it. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. There's that divine timing and everything happens and divine timing. You, I think, you know, everything does happen in divine timing. Yeah. But sometimes um, the divine gives you a kick up your backside. Totally. Uh, you know, it's about time now, like yesterday. So get on with it. And if you don't, we will. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm going through right now. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, um, and I think I'll be um, definitely inspired to share this um, journey, mm -hmm. um, this healing journey. And it's, um, God, I'm getting quite emotional just talking about it. But um, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I'm uh, having lots of... Um, I guess I'm doing a lot of healing and inner work um, and a um, lot of journaling and things like that mm -hmm. and everything that I've actually, well, almost everything that I've um, learned, um, um, putting it into practice and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, um, it's time for me to wake up and take inspired action yeah and this is this is a really powerful time for you to to embody everything that you know you know and it's come in, in the disguise of that health issue that you're working through because this is your opportunity to preach practice what you preach isn't it exactly. and by doing that you're going to become a freaking unstoppable um force for others with deep empathy for what they're going through and also, yes. you know, the actual sound experience of the healing for yourself. Yeah. Really cool. So it's a gift. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you. for this illness. Yes, Thank yes. you so much for this. Yes, yes. With. This is In an gratitude. amazing opportunity. Yeah. Amazing. Gratitude. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Swallow it up in gratitude. Just love it to bits. And then you feel that you'll feel a shift. <laughs> All right. Where am I up to here? Christine, I don't think I've come to you, have I? No. Um, yeah, that that meditation was really good because um I was thinking about the inspiration that I want to do with the course the online course that I'm doing and yeah. um, with everything that I've been going through, I sort of hadn't really had the um, <laughs> the inspiration to do it. Although what I've got from that meditation was do it slowly and get through it and do the next stage, what I want to do so that I can actually do it as, as a business for myself. Um, mm -hmm. I do have um, plans that I was wanting to do and every now and again I get in the way and I was sort of thinking that I have to look at what I want to do, that I do have a gift in this field because I've been doing it um, intuitively for a long time and I'm just now getting into the theory and understanding how to actually work with it. Yeah. Um, and I want to really, I want to really get there and do it, and um, to to get into that field and know that I can do it. Uh, she said. <laughs> <laughs> so I really need to sort of let self doubt go and yeah. work on my plan and know that it'll take time and I need to um, I need to study harder and faster and get it done <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe you need to relax more and and allow more and um, come into alignment more yeah. and allow the life to to kind of like 
bring the opportunities to study, bring the opportunity, you know, bring the space, bring the motivation, bring the energy as you just kind of offer it back and say, okay, you know, I am willing to go on this journey and I'm going to look after myself. I'm going to keep myself in alignment. I'm going to stay open and positive and grateful. And I'm going to follow the inspiration that you're, you know, leading me. And I, and I know, and I trust this is going to happen. And I have absolute gratitude in advance for this beautiful gift that I'm going to be offering the world. And I'm so mm -hmm. grateful for that. And I'm open to how this is all going to flow. Cause I don't know. And I'm, I'm just willing and, mm -hmm. and ready to go for the ride. So, you know, when you come into that kind of space, you're just Oh, open yourself up to the yes because otherwise like if I um think about it sort of intellectually I can put myself in so many different places where yeah. oh, I can't do it or oh it's not going to happen um yeah I don't know what to do and then by thinking oh I can do this I can do that I might try this da, 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 da. Mm. Um, and it doesn't need to be um <laughs> it doesn't need to be sort of an, an intense business where I need to um, make my, my make my good income and all that sort of carry on. I just yeah. want to do it because yeah, it's something that I've I've sort of wanted as a child and not really had that direction to go there. So now that I'm here, it's something that is sort of internally what I want to do. Yeah, and and it's a and it's fun and it's it's yeah. fun it's, and it's exciting and it's your passion and you just keep focusing and enjoying those feelings, mm -hmm. then that's going to raise your vibration and and lead you to the right people and the bright people are going to find you and you know and it's all just going to flow as you stay with all those good feelings and keep and and what you love about it and all that stuff you know. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Christine. So I think. Yeah. Is it, Cherie, have I been with to you yet? I have been to you. Joanne, I haven't been to you, have I? You have. I have. Oh, mm -hmm. so I've been to everybody now. So I was going to say just um, to a couple of you that, you know, the, the daily practice of, of uh, I don't, a meditation that you do that gets you into a really aligned place and especially like practicing gratitude and gratitude in advance I really recommend doing that um just doing something even if it's five minutes a day is is so powerful it's way more powerful than trying to catch up a two-hour meditation once a month or something like that it just doesn't work like that it has to be cumulative just like doing a bit of yoga or going for a run every day or every couple of days is, is way, you know, better for your body and conditions your body better than doing it once every month. So it's that little daily tap in, that little daily tune in that's going to create the buoyancy for you that you really want to actualize as you're moving towards this inspiration that you're bringing in. So I just wanted to recommend that anyway for everybody. Um, so, of course, I have a workshop coming up in a couple of weeks and on the first week, in the first week in November, it's a seven week workshop, which will take us to, I don't know, a couple of weeks before Christmas. And uh, it's just going to be a really juicy, powerful one where we're going to be focusing on all the stuff we've talked about here tonight, really activating that heart energy and tapping into it in a really powerful way to let it not only bring in the inspiration and the ideas and the, the information for us and whatever project we're working on um, and also you know yeah just moving with that inspiration uh, kind of letting down those walls and and yeah everything we've talked about tonight I'm not explaining it very well am I um, to move you in this direction of your inspiration so if you want to be supported um, to move, you know, forward with this in a way that is, you know, really embodying our larger self, our 4D self, as, as John was saying, when we focus on the fears and everything, we're really just living in 3D, we're living in the physical, but, but we are evolving away from that. And I'm afraid you're not going to find courses like this at the Polytechnic you know, or the or the university, you know, and that's why I'm, you know, cut off from all of those income supports and I'm just like, you know, doing it on my own on social media. But I am totally passionate about getting us out of that 
fucked up system and tapping into this universal law that is just it is the prevalent law and yet we kind of cut it off when we're caught up in these spirals and kind of wonder why our life isn't working so wouldn't it make more sense to open to these universal laws that are the truth of our underlying reality that we are actually all one thing connected if we know that as the basis and we operate as that and and operate in ways that really takes that into consideration then we're going to be effectively opening ourselves up to oh, just partner with this amazing higher energy that we are so anyway I will send you all a bit of information about that and, and invite you and if you want to yeah be great It'd be so much fun fun flow woo! <laughs> All right, does anyone have anything to say before we close off? And um, thank you so much for coming and, and for staying all this time. I know it's been a really long night and um, I really, really appreciate you you coming here and spending this time. It's just so wonderful to connect with all of you, beautiful, beautiful beings. Is there anything you'd like to say before we close off? Just thank you. Thanks, John. Lovely to meet you, John. Yeah, I think uh, I could buy a coffee saying we're neighbours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> I'm jealous. I'm jealous you're Susan's neighbour. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I think we'd be having coffee often if you were, if we were neighbours, Duella. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, we, we can always Thank make... you, Susan. Thank my you, pleasure Susan. lovely to connect with you yeah, all and really yeah nice. I'll, lovely I'll, meeting you all yeah well thank i'll you. touch base thank with you. you all soon thank you so much thank you, thank you. all right thank you. beautiful night oh. see you bye, bye. everybody bye.